Hello, good evening everyone. This is Dari on World Streams Radio. Thank you to our listeners from all around the world for joining us. To learn more about World Streams Radio, visit our website, worldstreams.org. You can also find us now on Facebook at facebook.com slash worldstreams and facebook.com slash worldstreams.worldmusic. Our guest tonight is Dr. William I. Robinson. Dr. Robinson is a professor of sociology at the University of California, Santa Barbara, and also affiliated with the Latin American and Iberian Studies Program and with the Global and International Studies Program. As a scholar activist, Dr. Robinson links his academic work to struggles in the United States, in the Americas, and around the world for social justice, popular empowerment, participatory democracy, and people-oriented development. His most recent book, Latin America and Global Capitalism, A Critical Globalization Perspective, was published in 2008. Hi, Saeed. Hello and welcome, Dr. Robinson. It's an honor and pleasure to have you with us on World Streams tonight. On the contrary, thank you very much for having me on. Wonderful. Uh, hello, Dari, and good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us, and good evening to you, Dr. Robinson. Thank you for being with us tonight. Uh, Dr. Robinson, how did you develop the passion for such a topic? You know, I've been, I've, um, I've been an activist for 30 years, a scholar activist for 30 years, and I've participated in popular struggles around the world, and I've watched this crisis, the crisis that I've been writing about, uh, develop uh, around the world and come to the conclusion that we've really reached a historic juncture, a really critical juncture. We're at a time of extreme turbulence. Uh, we've never, the world, humanity, has never fight, quite faced the type of a crisis that we're facing uh, now, and if we don't act collectively, uh, we're going to see the end of civilization as we know it. So if you were to explain the word crisis to somebody who who is really oblivious to the word, how would you approach uh, someone who has never, who, who doesn't have an idea about what it, what it's all about? Well, it's increasingly impossible for global society, for our societies to, to, to reproduce themselves. It's impossible for a majority of humanity increasingly to guarantee its most minimal survival. The system simply cannot meet the needs of a majority of humanity. But there are also ceilings being reached in the ability of the system simply to exist, to reproduce itself, um, particularly ecologically. It's not going to be, it's, it's, we're entering into a period where it's not going to be possible ecologically for us to reproduce uh, the global capitalist system, the global production system, we're headed towards a situation where agriculture, world agriculture, is already beginning to experience a collapse. Uh, the number of people worldwide that are completely unemployed and marginalized, unable to be absorbed by the global economy, has increased now to one-third of humanity. It's one-third of the adult population, and that's according to data by the International Labor Organization. So one-third of humanity has no way really of making a living, of surviving, having their, their survival from one day to the next uh, uh, secured. Uh, meanwhile, the system continues to be ever more militarized. The, I, we are living currently in what we can call a, a global war order in which the system's own reproduction, in which the possibility of transnational corporation making profits and the possibility for the powers that be to reproduce their power and domination rests on ever-expanding wars and ever-expanding forms of social control and conflicts, actually feeds off of conflicts and wars and social control. And so you put these different things together, and the economic system, the economic system, it's collapsed in 2008. Um, you know, world rulers speak of a recovery, but it's very clear that there's no real recovery for majority of the world's population. And secondly, and it's very easy to analyze, we're headed towards another, towards very soon, towards a repression or a depression that will make 2008 look quite small, actually. So if you put this all together, a collapsing economy, at the um, in ecological holocaust, increased warfare and militarization endlessly, uh, and rising social polarization and inequality and a crisis of survival for majority of humanity, you, you have a crisis that, that we're facing in the world that we've, we've never really seen before and which is so leading Dr. towards Robinson, our destruction. Right. So, Dr. Robinson, when you're talking about the concentration of powers within 
uh, very few. What came to mind earlier when you were talking about sustainability of products uh, uh, to live on, what came to mind is uh, this organization called, this corporation called Monsanto, for example, in, in actually uh, making, uh, making patents on crops that actually cannot sustain humanity without uh, people becoming uh, serviable or slaves of, of those particular crops. Is that, is that one example of what you're talking about? Well, absolutely. I mean, well, first, that's an example of the increasing domination of transnational capital. I'm sure you're aware, say, that over the last 20, 30 years, hundreds of millions of people have been pushed out of the countryside in the third world and around the world. Yes. And the biggest movement in world agriculture has been the, really the takeover of agriculture by transnational agribusiness, by just a handful of giant transnational corporations. And Monsanto, of course, tops the list. Uh, and and the inability of the majority of humanity to produce their own food, uh, and with it comes, you know, the conversion of agricultural production and food production into simple uh, profit-making for these giant transnational corporations. Monsanto in particular has been uh, particularly noxious. Uh, you know, Monsanto has created seeds that don't reproduce and patents and spread right. this around the world. So, um, I mean, this is a sign of the ever-increasing domination of transnational capital of the, of the very the lifeblood of the planet. There is a story that actually they made uh, people of Haiti burn their seeds. Is that, is that a true story? Do you I, know? Don't, I don't know. I don't, have not heard that story specifically, um, but governments have destroyed the seeds around the world of farmers um, who have attempted to supply their own seeds, to use their own seeds rather than use Monsanto's. What has happened in Haiti is that the, the, um, the world, U.S. government, the World Bank, the International Monetary Fund, forced the Haitian government under extreme duress to completely open up, lift all restrictions, and open up its internal market to export, subsidize exports from the United States and from the from, um, you know, from the from the global from global agribusiness, and so the market was flooded, and Haiti went from being self-sufficient in food, in rice production, and basic food production, to being totally dependent on on imports of food. And and so, I mean that's the. So, uh, Dr. Robinson, you're actually not really against capitalism. You're you're only against this model that has created crisis after crisis. Could you give us? maybe a historical background going back to the 70s and how much has changed since? Yes. Uh, I mean, we could take the story back to the late, to the late um, 19th century. Industrial capitalism matures in the 19th century and in the 1880s, 1890s, a period of rapid industrialization in the north and, of course, a period of new round of, of um, imperialism and of colonial conquest. Africa is colonized and mm -hmm. so forth. But what's going on with in, in the north, at least, in the heartlands of, of, of world capitalism is a very rapid social polarization, intensive exploitation of workers. This is the rise of socialist movements, of communist movements, of the trade union movement, uh, militant class struggles all over the world, militant social struggles. And this leads, of course, to a period of increased turmoil, something like what we, we were facing now, but now it's yes. much more grave. And it, all of this culminates in a new model in the 20th century of capitalism in which basically uh, the working class, popular classes, subordinate groups around the world was able to force capital and states to redistribute wealth downward in the form of legislation for higher wages and for benefits and for vacation and unemployment and so forth, but also in the form of public health and public education and the form of taxation systems, which and these taxation systems acted as redistributive mechanisms. And so in the rich countries, at least in, the, in the, those countries that are colonizing the rest of the world, Europe, uh, North America, living standards went up and these worst these incredible conflicts that capitalism was generating and these credible tensions were somewhat ameliorated. So in the mid-20th century, we had social welfare capitalism um, in the United States, more strongly pronounced in Europe, uh, in Japan, and in some other uh, countries. And what happens is that all of this because the capitalist system is contradictory. The capitalist system is constantly going through these uh, cycles of, of crisis. In the 1970s, early 1970s, is a massive crisis. Um, mm -hmm. That was the biggest crisis at that time since the Great Depression of the 1930s. 
And workers respond to this crisis by saying, we're not going to pay for this. And every time capital and employers tried to lower wages and roll back benefits, workers went out on strike. So there were these massive conflicts. If we take the example of the U.S., for instance, in Europe at this time, massive conflicts. And so capital took another strategy. Capital said, well, we're going to go global. We're going to develop the capacity to reorganize, restructure the whole world economy, to break free of nation-state constraints, to break free of the power of trade unions and the power of workers and the power of the popular classes at the nation-state level. And this leads us into this epic of globalization. Uh, I don't know if your listeners are familiar with the term neoliberalism, this package right. of measures which facilitates really this rise of this new phase of global capitalism that we're in. And that pushed workers and the poor and popular classes on the defensive worldwide, and we saw the complete restructuring once again of the system starting in the 1970s. This intensifies in the 1980s into the 1990s. Really, this is a war of the global rich and the powerful and the transnational corporations on the global poor. And so take the example of the United States. Wages go down every single year without a single exception right to date uh, from 1973 to the present. Real wages uh, have gone steadily down from 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 1973, and now we know that with the crisis of 2008, um, corporations, investors, and with the states that back them have used this crisis to further reorganize and uh, the system and to fur further launch attacks on labor, uh, to basically do away with trade unions and to basically third worldize the first world. You know, Jake, the same conditions of super exploitation and control that have ex existed in the former colonized world in the third world we're now seeing being imposed also on the on the. Uh, the rich countries. And, and by the way, I don't think that we can resolve this crisis within the framework of capitalism. Capitalism maybe was a progressive force in the last few hundred years. It raised uh, the, the productive capacity of humanity and so forth. But at this point, I, I really don't think that I, that I can say I'm in favor of any kind of capitalism. I think we really need to think beyond the, the box of this system in order to get out of this crisis that we're in.